Welcome to Security and Software Development Process presentation. I'm Radek Gramski, I'm CTO of Stepwise. Let's start with short introduction. As I said, I'm CTO of Stepwise. I have 13 plus years of experience doing software, uh, mostly around JVM. Uh, since a couple years, I work mostly with clouds, Kubernetes, uh, DevOps and security aspects of, of software. Uh, I'm also optimization freak, of course, without premature optimization, and I speak at different conferences from time to time. So this is the agenda. It's short. Uh, let's start with uh, why I have chosen this topic. Well, during uh, my developer experience, I noticed well, I experienced that that we developers tend to focus on business logic rather than uh, on security aspects. Uh, and on the other hand, we have a guys that uh, want to take advantage of our software, looking for for um, vulnerabilities and exposures uh, that, uh, that uh, our software may have. Uh, and in the recent years, we can see the huge and increasing amount of, of uh, software breaches. Uh, there were some loud ones, uh, but not to, not to focus on scaring you, I would like to show you how we can uh, minimize the risk of our software uh, being breached or, or taken advantage of. So, uh, Nowadays, software development lifecycle is uh, looks like this in, in short version. We start with requirement analysis. We go through design, implementation, verification to release, and we do it often. Uh, it can be even multiple times a day. Uh, so how can we make our software development lifecycle secure? Uh, we, we simply add different um, security aspects at different stages of software development lifecycle. So let's start with uh, requirement analysis. At this point, uh, the, our goal uh, should be uh, to make our developers, to make the whole team aware about um, security aspects. So what we can do, we can do security training. It's a bit, it can be done internally internally if we have uh, a person that is uh, experienced uh, and aware of security aspects uh, we should also uh, create or assign someone security advisor role uh, there should be a person or a team responsible for uh, taking care of security aspects of our application uh, we should also uh, collect security requirements of our uh, application, not only the business ones. We should also think about privacy requirements. Um, uh, for example, GDPR uh, puts a lot of pressure on that. So this is something we should also co consider. And we should analyze potential source of bugs in our project reality. Uh, this can be uh, pressure of deadlines, uh, business logic that can be leaking information, uh, or team experience. So once we deal with uh, requirement al analysis, we go to design phase. At this point, when we are designing the application, there is uh, a very valuable project uh, called Open Web Application Security Project. Uh, which I will uh, talk a bit more on next slides. We can take advantage of web application firewall that protects us from various threats. We should keep things simple because the more complex the system or is, the there is a bigger chance of uh, making mistake or leak the data. We should also secure database and other external systems access if we are storing, um, for example, credentials. We shouldn't store them in a plain text. We can use uh, tools like SOPs. I will also uh, show it in, in the next slides. Uh, we should also think about secret management at this point, how we're going to 
store and uh, use secrets, who has access to secrets, where they are stored, either it's going to be Kubernetes secrets, if, if that's the case, who has access to that. And we should also care about data at rest and data in transit. For example, data in transit, we can use um, uh, SSL uh, and a, a data at rest. I mean, stuff like backups and stuff it, that should be encrypted and we should think about it at early stage, which is design phase. Okay, what's also imp important at design stage is threat modeling. We, we should identify threats basing on designs. We should think about what can go wrong in our system. We should classify the data. For example, if we store like first names, last names, this stuff is going to be more protected and should we should put more attention to that rather than, for example, if we collect logs, IP uh, addresses. It's not that even though it, IP address is also GDPR affected because it's a it's a treated as a personal data, but it's not that important to, to, to protect the IP address like we want to protect the first name, last name, uh, ID number, and stuff like that. We should also analyze the data flows to find any colliding flows or, or flows that can leak the data. And once we identify threats, we should document them. And after that, we should define actions and test those threat uh, scenarios. So what can be useful at design stage as well is open web application security projects. There is, uh, there, there, there is top 10 security risks that I believe uh, every developer should be familiar with. And here you can see the list of those risks. You can also see the top 10 proactive controls that you can do to minimize the risk so this is like a um, like a short information on on top security risk and top proactive controls but what's more valuable on uh, that project is application security verification standard this is a very very good starting point uh, because it has a lot of checkpoints. If you want to build your own security verification standard or software development lifecycle, this should be a starting point because uh, I just noted a couple of interesting checkpoints from that document, which is, for example, during the planning, all stories should also have security requirements. We should, at, when we log information, we should use common logging patterns across the systems. We should identify the sensitive data and classify it into protection level, like I said before on, on, on username or ID number and IP address examples. We should define requirements for passwords. Uh, we should, of course, uh, salt and hash passwords, or we should use bcrypt be grouped for that. We should use strength meter and check against bridge databases uh, of our password. We should do input validation. Uh, Intra-service secrets like passwords to the database should not rely on, on changing credentials. And as you can see, those are, this is just like a six out of dozens or of, of um, advices that you can take advantage of and you can implement it easily into your development uh, process. Uh, there, there is also something called web application firewall, which uh, gives you uh, protection from most common HTTP attacks. Uh, which is uh, cross-site scripting as call injections are generally the most often uh, attacks. There is also uh, open, uh, OWASP also has mod security core rule set where you can see uh, the rules that web application firewall uh, can use. Nginx has uh, mod security web application firewall. There is Nginx anti-XSS and SQL injection, which is called Naxi. Uh, and all cloud 
providers have their own uh, WAF servers. For example, GCP has Armor, AWS has WAF, and Azure also have WAF, which is based on, on Nginx. And of course, Kubernetes ingresses uh, also have their respective WAF web application frameworks uh, that you can uh, use. Uh, okay, so we, we, um, we at the design, we also should think how we're going to secure database or other external systems. Uh, so we should, unless it's really, really necessary, uh, we shouldn't have access to our database from the internet. Uh, we should use encrypted connections, uh, use strong and unique passwords, and of course, rot rotate them. That should be uh, included in our policy. Uh, of course, passwords should be injected. We shouldn't store them in a code, uh, at least in not in a plain text. Uh, we should granulate permissions. For example, uh, if possible, we should add access to only to tables, columns, or rows, if it makes sense, just to give minimal required permissions for each user. And if we cannot give uh, an access to a table for a user, we can use views and limit the data that is uh, shown in, on, on a view. Of course, we should uh, do backup of our uh, database or any other external uh, storage system. And uh, of course, when we do backup, we should uh, in regular, uh, on a regular basis, we should test the restore procedure, not only have a backup. Moreover, databases have their, uh, their own good practices in documentation. So if you use, for example, Postgres, Mongo, Redis, or uh, anything else, check the documentation for good practices uh, in, in terms of security. At the design stage, we should also analyze attack surface, uh, which is simply in and out paths of, uh, of our system. For example, user interface, HTTP headers and cookies, APIs, files, databases, everything that faces the internet uh, on, our, on our system. And once we do that, we should monitor changes in our system because, uh, because the system changes often and we don't want to, um, to any uh, insecure code or, 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 or anything else to slip in uh, our system.